Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and bees, unknowns, none of the above, more than one of the above, and everything else in between. Today, we're going to be working with Hilbert Curves. Again! It all started a couple of weeks ago when I put out a video of me riding along a Hilbert Curve for 20 minutes. And people loved it so much that Mojang released a brand new snapshot just for me with brand new minecart features. And so I released a second video with those features. And so today we're going to maybe wrap things up by seeing what else we can do with this fun shape. Well, first, let's actually go over what a Hilbert curve even is. For those who don't know, imagine we have this square and we want to fill it in with a big long pathway. Well, right now we have one square, but we could turn it into four squares and just have a pathway going through all four of them. And this gives us a single iteration Hilbert curve. Of course, this doesn't really cover it very densely. It just kind of briefly passes over the whole thing. So what we can do though, is simply do the same thing again, turn each of these four squares into four squares themselves and put in a U shape. But you'll notice that I've rotated them in a very specific way. And that is so that we can connect the ends together in the same way as the previous iteration, like so. And that gives us a second iteration Hilbert curve. And then from here on out, it's pretty much the same thing. Whenever we have one of these basic arch shapes, we turn it into this slightly more Y shape sort of thing and connect them together. So this arch gets replaced, this arch, gets replaced, this one gets replaced, and this one gets replaced. And now we have ourselves a third iteration Hilbert curve. And as you can see, it is starting to rapidly take up a lot of space. And at this point, if we went any further, well, at least given the current line width, it would just kind of fill in the whole thing. But also, uh, we'd end up start overwriting some other stuff that is very important, so we can't really do that. But yeah, that's the main idea behind a Hilbert curve. It's a recursively defined space filling curve, though there are also some slight variations that we can do. For example, if we take four Hilbert curves of any size and connect them together in this sort of pattern, we get what's called a Moore curve which basically is just a Hilbert curve, but fully continuous. Now you may be wondering what's so good about using a Hilbert curve over just like going back and forth or something. Well, one of the nice advantages of a Hilbert curve is it preserves locality. That means that if you pick any two points that are relatively close along the curve, they're always pretty close going along the plane, but you don't really get this sort of effect happening with just going back and forth. For example, these two points right here are pretty close going along the curve, but they are on completely opposite sides of the square. It also just looks cooler, but even aside from just looking cooler, the ability to preserve locality gives it some pretty interesting uses in math and science, such as, uh, one second, I gotta pull up the Wikipedia article, let's see. We got robots, Euclidean traveling salesman problem, visualizing data, gray code stuff. Wow, yeah, this thing has autism written all over it. Let's put a train on this thing. There's just one problem. We don't have trains in Minecraft, only minecarts. Closest thing we have a tr to a train is this furnace minecart that supposedly pulls things, but like, it doesn't even fully work and it never even made it onto Bedrock Edition. And I mean, Mojang's currently trying to fix up the minecarts. Now's the perfect time to add trains. Just give us an engine that goes really fast, like a train, and pulls things like a train. We, we want, want train, train update. update. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, so that led to the past couple of weeks where I put out a couple of videos of uh, just riding around on a Hilbert curve for a long period of time. Uh, the first one was originally going to be this big, but then I realized that would take about two hours and uh, decided not to, partly because 
I wasn't sure if I even have the disk space to record that. So, yeah. Now, as for how I actually built them, for the first one, I just kind of made the first little part and then used Lightmatica to repeatedly copy and paste it to just double it in size over and over. And uh, yeah, that worked out pretty well. However, for the second one, uh, we're in a snapshot, which at least at the time meant no mods. So, like any reasonable person, I made a data pack that generates Hilbert curves. Oh yeah. I've also left a link to this thing in the description in case you want to test that out. Now, let's start with this. A lot of people were interested in what happens if we just make it go really fast. And uh, the answer is actually not that exciting. Uh, as you can see, it's missing a lot of blocks because, uh, well, the thing that keeps track of the progress only runs every one game tick. But it is kind of cool how it just like gets faster and faster, I guess. And then uh, here's the best part. Goes flying. Goodbye. Anyways, uh, this also does a good job of showing the locality thing. You can see that it starts off relatively dense and then gets less dense the further out you go. And if you try this uh, with yourself in the minecart, it is actually not very exciting. You have no idea what's going on, especially if you turn on the Rotate with Minecarts feature. But seeing as how I went through all the work of making the data pack, we might as well have a little bit of fun with it. For example, uh, here we have an example of a very, very well done bridge. Obviously, this is the best bridge ever built. Uh, of course, uh, it doesn't make for a great torture chamber because you could just jump across it. So what we can do, though, is just simply generate a second one on top of it with different blocks. And uh, yeah, now, now you can't just jump across it. And uh, there we go. I have made the world's worst escape room. You just have to go along this whole thing very slowly so that you don't fall off. Yeah, very simple. I guess moving away from terrible escape rooms, uh, here I have this cool lava pathway. That's fun and everything. Um, just kidding, it's a terrible escape room. Uh, yeah, you just have to, you know, walk along this path without touching the sides and of course it's made of blue ice so that's going to be very easy so easy anyone can do it uh yeah where, where do i submit my escape room now i was just thinking we could maybe put like a creeper in there uh so the like it chases after you so that you have to go fast but i feel like the creeper would just walk into the lava but we can always just use a wither skeleton that works that works pretty well yeah, you just got to go nice and fast. I'm already dead. Now that gets me wondering, if we put a villager there and some sort of zombie there, will they actually go all the way through? Oh, oh, not very smart. Um, wh where, where are you going? Well, that's one way to get away. Doesn't get you away for very long, but okay, yep, good job. All right, now what about this one though? Oh, and he's, oh, head start, cool. Let's try this again. Yep, they are not very good with iron bars. Well, the good news is, if they ever fix trapdoors, we always have iron bars. All right, here's my next idea. We're going to, uh, yeah, use Lightmatica to copy and paste some sand high up into the sky because uh, that lets us do it without doing the block updates. So, I can't seem to get uh, Lightmatica to properly work, but we do have, I forgot about carpet mod fill updates. 
So we can just use that. And uh, there. That doesn't work. Okay, I think I realized why that's not working. It's because it uh, like actually does it in several fill updates and that uh, I guess causes problems. Did that work? Yes. Yes, it worked this time. All right, now we can do the thing. Trying to outrun that is hard. I mean, it's moving at like 10 blocks per second, which is twice as fast as you run. So uh, yeah, good luck outrunning that thing. This is uh, this doesn't look right. I have it set to 40 ticks per second and uh, it's it, uh, not quite right. I made sure that I have the carpet smooth animations on. Yeah, this looks kind of weird. Hey, look, a village. Time set noon. Everybody, it's time to wake up. Okay, get out of your houses. Okay, it looks like this is a slightly underpopulated village. Um, we're going to slightly populate it a little more. Because we're about to play a game. All right, everybody, take your places. We're about to play Hilbert Anvil Roulette. Oh, there we go. That was that was not as exciting as I thought it would be. Anyways, now let's get to the uh, exciting part. The the one that was probably in the thumbnail. Let, let's do this. All right, here we go. Let's. Ah, uh, there you go. And now we watch. Um, or get caught on trees. Cool. Uh, tick rate uh, 100. Yeah. Yeah, watch it go. Oh, there it is. Did it get stuck? It got stuck. That's sad. Uh, we went into the... Oh! Oh, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a slight problem. I, I think we're gonna need a different spot. Okay, let's see. So, execute as... Uh, e type equals falling block run uh, data merge entity self uh, block pnt pick unfreeze let's see yeah it works that does work that's cool okay so it turns out I accidentally forgot to start recording again before it started and also, uh, yeah, it was too close together, sadly. Um, still kind of cool looking, I guess. Oh, hey, we found lava. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Let's uh, maybe only go for three iterations this time so we can have them further apart. Oh, game rule do tile drops false there we go that's gonna speed things up a lot can, can, can you work please no it did the thing again okay so i think overlaying it does not work very well Okay, let's try this again. Of course. Okay, this time I swear I'm gonna get it right. Also because if I don't get it right this time, uh, I don't know if I'll get another chance this good again. So uh, let's just 
dig down a bit. Of course. Alright, enough trying to do this overground. Let's go underground. Where I know it works. There we go. There we go. Look at it go. This, this is how they should do caves. Forget strip mining. Th this is, this is how you should mine. Yeah. Stopping. Okay, I think that's the end. Yeah! Look at that! Now that's a cave. I just realized we could just like drop all of the TNT from, from above instead of chaining it. That, that would actually work <laughs> pretty well. Okay, so just ran some testing and yeah, I think this will be a pretty good width. So let's just uh, go ahead and run that. Redstone block. Right. Oh, did I go too high? There we go. Kind of frustrating that you have to be standing on a block in order for it to work. But, yeah. Now that's a good Hilbert Ravine. Alright, here's probably the last thing I'm going to try, at least for today. Let's see what happens if we go, we can go pretty big for this one. How, how do you spell this? Go, there we go. We're gonna put, uh, is this gonna go well? This is gonna go poorly, isn't it? Oh, that actually works. Cool. Wait, wasn't there? Oh, right, you could do something with, like, Gulk Catalyst thing. Okay, now I kind of want to try that. Okay, let's try that. Oh. Forgot about that part. Uh. Yeah, that doesn't go very well. Uh. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's gonna be about it for today. Uh, yeah, today was just kind of a do random stuff day, see what happens. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of that in the future. I don't know. Uh, anyways, make sure to press buttons if you want to, and most important of all, trans rights are human rights. <laughs>